entre las sombras desvaneciendo siempre all right so today we're in something a little bit more different it is a bmw it is classic it is rear wheel drive it looks good and it is sporty but there's no engine sound it's electrically converted 2002. several manufacturers who've been doing this. They've been taking classic cars, exchanging the drivetrain with an electric one. And I always was unsure about it. I just didn't know. It is odd. It's an odd feeling. It's quick. But it's quiet and I'm hearing noises that I normally would never hear. It's very weird. I I can't help but smile and laugh at it and kind of, you know, I'm kind of having a good time which is not what I would expect. So, before we get into it, I would say we quickly stop and take a walk around the outside and have a look at the car. All right, so in today's video, we're gonna actually be looking at this 2002, and it's not a regular 2002, as you can already tell, but the most notable difference is that it's electric. The day and age we're living in, people like you and I who are very enthusiastic about cars, modern cars, classic cars, we kind of have a grey future ahead of us. We don't know where it's going. There are ice bands uh, set in place by 2030, 2035, and many manufacturers have already said they're not going to be producing um, ice cars anymore. So we're not quite sure where it's going. But thankfully, there are several companies out there which are trying to tackle this problem, and Bavarian Econs is one of them. As the name says, Bavarian and Econs, they're mainly focusing on cars from Bavaria with the blue and white logo and uh, turning the Icons into Econs, which I think is a pretty cool thing. And the 2002 definitely is an iconic car. It turns heads um, and I think this concept is very interesting. And this is something I want to look into in this video with you guys, if this is a viable future for classic cars for people like you and me. Uh, let's figure it out. I always was pretty skeptical about turning classic cars into EVs. I do have to say that. So I don't know how I'm going to feel about it. I don't know if I'm going to like it. I don't know if it's going to convince me. But let's find this out. And before we do go on a drive in a minute, I quickly wanted to walk around the car with you guys uh, just to kind of explain all the details for you. What we do have to note, however, this is a prototype. So <laughs> if you see certain details, don't think that that's the final production thing. Um, this is their running prototype from the founders of the company, which they were kind enough to lend me. Yeah, it's kind of like a proof of concept just to figure out how does it work. Um, but the main thing we want to look at in this case is the drivetrain. So the basis car was a 1972 BMW 2002. It was a slalom car, which you can see by the cage inside. Um, the company Bavarian Econs has put on the flares, which are original Alpina flares. It looks a little bit more aggressive on the sporty side from outside, which I like. We have beefy, period correct Michelin semi-slicks. We have some nice BBS three-piece wheels. A pretty fancy wrap, which kind of gives away that it's electric, if uh, you already couldn't tell by the silent whiz that it made going past you. Underneath the car, we have a KWV3 suspension built in by Raab Motorsports, so we know that that's going to work. And on top of that, the suspension also has been dialed in to work with this specific car. Because when you replace the motor with batteries, uh, the weight balance of the car gets put off a little bit. So it's nice to know that the suspension goes in tune with that. Then let's walk to the interior. If we take a brief look, everything is kind of uh, period correct. We have the cage, we have a Momo Prototipo wheel. Uh, we have two period correct bucket seats with a very nice cord inlay, which I like a lot. And everything kind of feels 70s. You don't instantly think something is off. Everything's fitting. Here, I want to show you what's under the hood. Can we open this up? Ta-da! Surprise! That's what most people ask when they walk past this car. It's like, what is under the hood? Can we see? Can we see? This is what you see. You don't, well, you see a lot, but you don't see a lot of details. We have the batteries, which are from a BMW i3. Uh, at the front, there are eight cells. At the rear, there are six cells. This is the quick charge system, which you see, which is actually in use right now. Um, a full charge in a car takes about roughly an hour, hour and a half, depending on all the conditions. And with that, depending on the driving style, you get around, let's say, 180, 200 kilometers range. Then we can take a look at the back as well. Here we have the other six cells. Uh, the motor is below there, which is from a Tesla, actually. And that's basically it. There's not much more to it. I definitely would say it simplifies the whole system, because you obviously don't have a gearbox, you don't have gears. 
an interior you have a gear selector. Yeah, I don't know much more to it. I'm very, very intrigued to see what this thing is going to drive like, if it's going to be emotionless, which I can't really imagine, but that's kind of the expectation I have. Um, let me quickly show you how you start driving it. So also rather simple, and what I do like about it, you still have normal classical keys, you have normal gauges and instruments, kind of how, how it all would be in the 70s. You plug the key in, you turn it, we're not going to do it now because it's charging. Start the ignition, you hear two clicks from the back, and then you can put it in drive, release the handbrake, and off you are. It's simple as that. Center we have the speedometer, which is like original. What uh, Bavarian Econs have done, um, they have replaced the fuel gauge with the battery gauge, uh, you have the temperature of the batteries, and on the right, this is my favorite part actually, you have a power meter, which at the same time is a recuperation meter and also the charging meter. So right now we're charging with about 20 kilowatts. Yeah. So please just do note that um, this is just all a prototype. It is all just <laughs> proof of concept to show that it works. The final cars for the customers, they will be different. Um, a couple other specs. The car has 170 horsepower, electric horsepower is quite fitting and quite correct because the most powerful 2002 from the age of 2002 turbo also only had uh, 170 horsepower but with a dry weight of roughly 1100 kilograms it's actually relatively speaking it's not that little we have a battery pack of 40 kilowatts per hour the charger will take up to 50 kilowatts for all you electric nerds out there this is all new stuff for me i do not spend a lot of time on electric cars because i actually don't fancy them that much but if they look like this they're very interesting to me so, let's see what the car is like, let's see what it's like to drive, and let's go out for a run once it's done charging. Basically, the philosophy of Bavarian Econs, from what I can tell, is they have just tried to keep everything as analog as possible and as original as possible. What you can say about the day and age of resto mods is there's quite a few of them out there, a lot of them are attempting it, and then I would say most of the cases it just becomes over the top because they try to modernize too many things too much and it's not fitting, it's very difficult to make it feel nice, it's a very fine line. One of the ones, in my opinion, which does it probably the best, for example, is Singer Vehicle Design. A very nice mix of modern and old, a fantastic quality, but many, many other cases of other brands and companies, they just, you know, they fit modern lights and wheels and rear lights and interior and stereo and all these, and it becomes too modern and it's not fitting anymore with the electric drivetrain. You have two worlds connecting, which normally wouldn't connect, which is analog and old and classic and electric and futuristic. And it's, where do you find a good middle ground? And the path that Bavarian Econ took is to just to try to keep everything as old and as analog as possible, except for the drivetrain. And I quite like that. They could have easily gone for digital instruments. Nope. Analog instruments with a needle, which kind of has its own character. And that's fantastic. That's what you want. Everything is mechanical. You have buttons, no touch screens, no upgraded stereo or whatever. Old lights in the front and on the rear. Tires and wheels, wheels are old. Uh, period correct, uh, Michelin semi-slicks. Fantastic. I personally really like that. I think that gives it a lot more charm for me. But one does also have to say this is their working prototype, uh, which now has, I think they've done 15,000 test kilometers in all types of weather conditions. Um, so it is a rougher car. So let's begin with the most obvious thing, the lack of engine sound. It's very odd. It's very, very weird and it's kind of, I feel cheeky and it, it makes me smile, I'm enjoying it uh, and it kind of also makes me feel like I shouldn't be able to do this, I shouldn't be able to whiz around um, with such a classic, iconic car in such a manner and it actually is making me drive a little bit cheeky as well and I kind of like it. I mean, we can drift out of corners, uh, we can accelerate past the bus stop and people aren't going to point a finger give you a hand signal and call the police or whatever because you're quiet. No fumes, no noise, nothing coming out the car. Um, and that's, that's pretty interesting, I quite like that. So we're hearing noises that you normally wouldn't be hearing in such a way. The most obvious part is the tires, that's the loudest part. And whenever the tire starts to work, you get a bit of slip, you instantly hear that. Then you 
hear the wind noise mostly on the A pillar, which is the noisiest part. And obviously the aerodynamics from this era probably are not that great. Then you hear the electric motors kind of whizzing and whining, but nothing augmented, nothing coming through speakers, which I like. It's a genuine motor noise that you're hearing. At slower speeds and braking, you sometimes I think you hear some sort of a regeneration. And that makes for a very interesting sound experience. And now that we're driving on the road, we're up to speeds, no rattles, no squeaks. It feels very, very solid. And I think a big help for that, as well as the suspension works and it feels solid, it feels balanced. I haven't really felt any, any understeer so far. You get a hint of oversteer if you want to promote, provoke it. But these sticky, fat Michelin semi slicks are doing their job. There's a lot of grip. Well, normally when you think of upgrading a car to EV, you think you can just up the power to any imaginable number. Take 500 horsepower, 1000 horsepower, whatever. But in this case, they decided to stay with 170 horsepower, which I quite like. It's kind of period correct like everything else is on the car. And honestly, I like that. You don't need a lot of power, especially on a light car, especially on a nimble car and on public roads. Too fast cars with too much power, you need to be going a lot quicker to be experiencing fun and enjoying the car. In this case, it's enough power to have fun. You're going quick enough. So driving modes, um, it's quite simple. We have the gear selector, which is here in the dashboard. Uh, and we have four buttons here, two of which are for heating and for locking the charger. And we have a sport and an eco button, which mainly adjusts the, the pedal feel of the throttle and how much power, power you have available. So now in the normal mode, if I floor it, we have about 60%, I believe. And if I put it in sport mode, we have 100% and you definitely feel the difference. So honestly, there's not much more to the drivetrain. It works, it's solid, it has power. Yes, it is lacking a bit of emotion opposed to an uh, internal combustion engine, but honestly, it depends what you're looking for. If you're wanting a classic car, it works reliably and you can drive wherever you want through whatever emission zone you want, and you don't need to worry about, and you don't need to worry about anything other than finding a space to charge, then this is what you want. The suspension really works well. It's dialed in very, very, very nicely. It's very comfortable, which is kind of what you want from a cruiser car, but at the same time, it will handle dynamics very well. Yeah, the steering, um, when trying to park, it's quite a pain. It's unassisted, but therefore it's even nicer at speed because as we know, unassisted steering is the nicest form of steering um, to have when driving dynamically, in my opinion, because it just tells you exactly what's going on. There's no loss in translation through hydraulics or electrics or whatever. So that's a very, very nice thing to have. And to get back to it, whether EVs are boring or not, I would say not. This is, I mean, this isn't a car you're gonna drive on a daily basis. It could be. It could be a fun uh, car to have to nip around the city and you're driving a cool car, you're driving a modern plastic um, piece of kit. You're driving a nice, original old car which we would like to drive but we probably wouldn't drive it on a daily basis because it's not as reliable maybe you can't get into the emission zones all these things this car answers those issues you can do all of those things you could drive it on a daily basis on the other hand this could also be a fun weekend car to have for every once in a while to drive and i would say it still feels special it still feels like something to look forward to and enjoy going out and especially if in the future Ice cars will just not be as easy to drive, who knows? I mean, currently we have a lot of bans incoming. By 2030, no more ice cars are allowed to be sold. And in the future, if I wouldn't be able to drive my classic car through town anymore, I'll definitely consider something like this. I would love to have an electric 2002. So a very interesting solution. I'm positively surprised by it. Um, let me know what you think. You think it's fine to convert a classic car, to take the engine out, put the electric drivetrain in? Um, and would you have one? I never thought I'd put an electric car in this channel, to be entirely honest. And this would have been the one to drive. So I'm very glad we got it on there. Let me know what you think of it. And thanks for watching. If you liked it enough, subscribe, like, leave a comment. And I'll see you next time.